Okay, now for frame four, I've got the first three frames cleaned up. For frame four, I don't want to quite get to this frame yet. That's too big a jump, but I know where I'm headed because this is the next element I want. And so what I can do is I can rasterize that and I can bring it into the next few frames as an asset I want to use. So let's see some of the differences. Oh, it's because I have the drop shadow on it that makes cutting it out kind of difficult. So I'm going to do something kind of sneaky here. I'm going to select all the empty space around it. And then I'm going to click on, it's not feather. This is refine edge. And refine edge is a little bit different than feather because you can expand the selection without it gradating, because feather will always be a soft edge. I'm gonna create a hard edge refinement here. So I wanna push my selection in five pixels. Then I say, okay, which is over in the far right corner. And now, <laughs> I just needed to invert that. So, going to select it, turn off these layers behind it. I'm just trying to get rid of the little drop shadow. And then I'm going to go to Refine Edge, and I'm going to increase it. five pixels and I'm going to put it as a selection so this is on your on the camera I'm just moving this in so in the drop down you want to say selection not new layer that was my mistake last time and then say okay All right, so now it is selected, and you can see, if I zoom in, the selection is now biting in and taking away that edge. It's also biting into my horns a little bit, but that's okay. But that cleans it up. So refine edge is a nice way to kind of cut into an image without feathering. It just moves the selection, constricts it a little bit. Ooh. Where's my zoom? Okay, so next, I have that element. You see how the horns are a little transparent there. That's why it's nice to have that background gray because that was part of the selection. It kind of ate away at some of the horns. So how can I fix that? Well, this is from our compositing skills. I'm gonna select the empty space around it, go to a new layer and say, select inverse and then fill it with white. So I get kind of a white cutout of my creature or of my head. Then I'm just gonna move it behind so that it fills in those gaps in the horns. And then I can merge those layers by holding down Shift to select both of them and going to Layer, Merge Layers. So now it's all on one layer. So that's a nice clean asset. Oops. Oh, my zoom tools aren't working the way I want them to. That's a nice clean asset. It's ready to go. Don't need to see properties right now. But it's too big a jump 
from that to this, right? So where, when do I want to get to this step? Well, if I look at my sketch, I want to get to that step probably, so shadows, stubble added, probably by um, either step five or six. I think step five would be a good time for that step. So I want to move it pretty quickly to this, but not all in just one step. So what can I do? Well, I'm going to copy this, a lot of duplication. I use Command J into the next folder, into my next frame. And then I want to start taking away from it. So if I know um, I want to change the fabric a little bit, I can take a low opacity eraser and start kind of fading it in. Because it was purple before, right? So I'm just erasing it away at 66% to let some of that purple from the layer before come through. But there's probably an easier way to do it than erasing, right? Because it's always good to leave more information than to take it away. So what I'm going to do is make, there's a bunch of ways I can do this, but I'll, I'll try to make it simple. Frame three, I want to use frame three folder. So I'm going to duplicate the whole folder, make it a copy, then right click on it and say merge the layers so that it's no longer a folder. So it's just one asset. Then I'll drop that into the next frame to composite with. And now I can simply play with it, decide what elements do I need more of, what do I need less of. I can see the changes that are happening. So I think I want a little bit of this purple, so I'm going to use the magic wand. I'm going to have contiguous checked, so I'm only selecting it where I want it. Select all of that purple, duplicate that onto its own layer. And then I can decide, well, how much of this do I want? I can change its shape a little bit. Control T, expand it up, expand it side to side. And this is transitioning, right? From one layer to the other. So I'm going to take its opacity down. Just to a little bit above 50. Now other elements I might want. Maybe the nose. So I'm going to steal all of these colors. Duplicate that onto its own layer, and then fade that out about 50%. And then the horns. So this bluish color, I'm going to select that out. Duplicate it. And then let's uh, warp it a little. Or not warp it, just extend it using Control T. I'm not sure why my transform box isn't showing. The properties are there, it's just a little hard to. There we go to know where I can adjust them. I haven't had that problem with PhotoP before. Okay. So I'm just going to fade that to about 
a little over 50 percent and so the thing that adjusted right away were the eyes i want that big jump it's kind of dramatic from this to this but the other things are a little less dramatic and then we go to this oh, let me turn off that background So now the stubble comes in, everything comes in. Maybe I'll take out the glint in the eyes in four. And I can just do that directly. I'll select them. I'm using these all as raster objects. No, nope, I don't want all the white selected, just these ones and i'm going to go ahead and fill those with the orange so i'm going to use the paint bucket Select the color right there, and then just drop it in. So the eyes get a little bit more sparkle in the fifth frame. Okay. All looking pretty clean. So one, two, three, four, five. Now for the sixth frame, we're gonna start using this asset. So I'm gonna duplicate it, move it to the sixth folder. So each folder is where we build each image. And now I have to think, well, what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna merge them together a little bit. I need to start moving some of these elements. So I'm actually going to, let's see, maybe bring in my different shapes so I have an easier time manipulating this one, which was my finished exercise too. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the PSD, which has all of those different layers, but not before I save my progress. Okay, now I'm going to open up the PSD asset, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. It's all about being organized. And I want to bring this head in with all of its different shapes separated so I can move them around and still have it's like South Park and, and cutouts of construction paper. So I can move things around on it and have it start to, to warp and change. It's taking a long time to load it. <laughs> That's not a good sign. There we go. Okay. So, what can I do? I'm going to take off the drop shadow effect. I want to kind of clean up this asset so I understand everything that goes into it. Then I want all of these shapes. Concerns me that it's going so slow, but that's why I saved my work before. I'm going to take off the white stroke. 